Hi, everybody, and welcome to the EMS Today Show. I'm AJ Heitman. I'm pleased to be your host. And with me today is Assistant Chief Chris Johnson, a nationally registered paramedic with the Newcastle County Emergency Medical Services System. And uh, we're going to be talking about something that I call from zero education to hero, zero to hero, where Newcastle County paramedics implemented a complete pay-as-you-learn education and recruitment program. And uh, I want to tell you a little bit about Chris first, and then I'm going to ask him to jump in here and talk about their system. Um, as I said, Chris uh, became a, a paramedic in 2002, uh, and uh, he completed his studies at the uh, Delaware Technical and Community College Paramedic Program. He's held assignments in field operations on Medic One, a name near and dear to my heart, in the city of Wilmington, Medic Four, Brandywine Hospital, Medic Two, Newcastle, Delaware, and Medic Three in Newark, Delaware. And behind me, you can see the beautiful equipment. I've always remarked about the equipment for Newcastle. The paramedics get the best equipment, the best uniforms, the best trucks, and uh, have a great reputation. So when I heard about this program, I really wanted to talk to you about it because I think you can really copy it. And uh, I think that Chris and his gang are be happy if you copied it because they've found a solution to uh, recruitment and retention. Uh, Chris went on and served as a FTO, a field training officer, until his promotion to paramedic sergeant in July of 2013. And in May of 15, uh, he was promoted to the rank of lieutenant and reassigned to the Special Operations Administration branch as the recruitment, applicant processing, and field training coordinator. In May of 2020, he's a, he's a go-getter. He's promoted to the rank of senior lieutenant. And then he was promoted to his current rank of assistant chief in November of 2020 and is currently the commander of special operations administration branch for the Newcastle County paramedics. Uh, incidentally, has to do uh, some really special work for a really special person uh, in the White House who goes back to Newcastle uh, about five minutes from where he's located right now. Uh, every weekend. So he has a definite, uh, uh, you know, a job assignment in covering the president. And uh, I'm sure if, uh, if your paramedics are the ones there, if anything happens, I, I know the field medical team for uh, the president, and I'm sure they, they love working for you. Now, in his spare time, Chris is also a volunteer member of the Aetna Hose Hook and Ladder Company of Newark and, and all the squads in, in in uh, Delaware, I have really unique names like that. I love the hook and ladder reference in there. Yeah, you held that position of deputy chief of EMS for nine years. Uh, he's a member of the University of Delaware Emergency Care Unit, where he served in various roles, including coordinator of the student run organization, a really good group. And he served as EMS coordinator for the Dover International Speedway for four years, from 15 through 18, where he helped the Speedway build their medical response plans for all events, including NASCAR, music festivals, and uh, events that saw up to 90,000 attendees. That's a big job. Uh, he holds an associate degree in paramedic technology from Delaware Technical and Community College, a bachelor of science degrees in, in exercise physiology, good for EMS, I'm sure, from the University of Delaware and is completing requirements for his master's degree in management with a concentration in organizational leadership at uh, Wilmington University. Uh, he's also a graduate of the West Point Command and Leadership Academy, something really special, sponsored by the New Jersey uh, State Association of Chiefs of Police, where he was the first non-law enforcement graduate to receive the Chief Harry White Academic Achievement Award for the Newcastle County Cohort, and he currently serves as an instructor with the program. That's a lot of stuff, folks, and I'm going to end up here saying that he's received several uh, official awards and commendations including a distinguished unit citation, a life-saving award, and special pre-hospital sudden cardiac arrest save citations. He's also designated by the Kiwanis Club of Wilmington as the paramedic of the quarter for the third quarter of 2012. And uh, he's gonna tell you about the system. Um, he's then gonna, we're gonna, then gonna talk about the unique program, which uh, I'm gonna surprise Chris right now to tell him that they've been nominated for a uh, EMS 10 award uh, at GEMS. And so we'll see how that happens. Uh, the conference is in August, and I think it's a very good candidate for a very, uh, the, that's the 10 most innovative programs of the year. And uh, that's what you've been nominated for. So welcome, Chris, and uh, tell us a little bit about your system, how many units, 
call volume, et cetera. Thanks, AJ. Um, and thank you for the introduction. Um, it is very much appreciated. So um, Newcastle County uh, in Delaware, I'm actually gonna talk about Delaware's EMS system because when you talk about EMS in Newcastle County, it's a mirror of Kent County and Sussex County. Uh, the Delaware EMS system is, is nice because uh, it's, it's a state of three counties. Um, we just traveled to the bottom of the state last week to, to help them uh, dedicate a new paramedic station and took an hour and a half. Um, it's really easy for us to share things, share ideas. So we share a system. Um, our paramedic system is a, is a two-tier system. Uh, basic life support is provided uh, by the local fire departments in Newcastle County. We have uh, 22 of them. Uh, we also have a college run EMS system and a uh, full time system in um, the city of Dover and city of um, Wilmington or Dover being in, in King County. Um, but they provide the basic life support. So the paramedic system in Newcastle County is strictly ALS. We strictly do ALS calls. Um, we operate in chase vehicles, uh, one of which you see behind AJ right there. Um, and you know, if it's an ALS level response, you're actually getting an ambulance with two basic life support providers and a paramedic unit um, with two ALS providers. So for every higher priority incident, you're getting four providers on the scene. Um, it, we are, are very attentive to the fact that, um, you know, we want to keep this system that we have um, for a number of reasons. Our, we feel that our patients are getting um, the best level of care with the number of providers that are there. It's safe for us with that many providers. Um, so if we get there and, you know, it's, it's a, um, we don't feel that, uh, you know, we do a full assessment, we, we treat the patient and there's something more that we're gonna do as ALS providers, our standing orders in Delaware uh, actually allow us to send the patient with the basic life support ambulance to the hospital and then we can clear and go available. Um, the nice part about that is it doesn't, uh, you know, tie up a, a, a paramedic um, for things that our basic life support providers can do and, and do very efficiently. Um, we have, you know, we have some of the best basic life support providers, you know, in, in, in the country. Um, and I think the reason for that is because of the two tiered system, the fact we work so well together, most of our paramedics um, help train the basic life support providers. Um, there's constant feedback. Um, they constantly share time together, even though they're all from different agencies. Um, so that's our system. Um, it, what's really nice is uh, we have a level one trauma center right in the middle of Newcastle County. Um, so we're not flying patients to Philly. We're not going to Baltimore um, unless you're looking for special specialty care, um, such as burns um, and things like that. Um, so our patients are typically getting to trauma centers within 10 to 15 minutes. There are some areas of the county where we do have to use aviation um, just because there's rural areas way down south. Um, and then if we're way up north due to um, north of the city of Wilmington with traffic and so forth, we can fly them and those times are gonna be a little longer. So am, um, I right, am I right that your aeromedical is provided by Delaware State Police? That is correct. They are our primary aircraft. Um, and those paramedic troopers or trooper paramedics, they're troopers first. Um, and then they go to school to become paramedics. They actually go to school um, uh, at Delaware Technical Community College. So they're going through the same training program as, as some of our, our paramedics um, that we hire as you know, pre-certified. Um, and we have had conversation with them about joining us uh, in our paramedic academy. Uh, so we're looking to grow our program. The program we're gonna talk about today, we're looking to grow and that's one of the areas that we're actually looking to grow. Yeah, well, let's talk about that. I mean, I've met many of your paramedics from the helicopter system and, uh, you know, just like Maryland, it's preeminent. People just know that they can trust that when they get a uh, flight, there's going to be no dilly dallying at the scene. Their job is there to quickly take the patient and swoop and go right to the trauma center. But um, we're gonna, I'm going to give you a lot of background here from, from what I've talked about with Chris ahead of this show to tell you that in 2013, Newcastle County EMS was looking at the uh, growing needs of the countywide system. Uh, it's anticipated growth in local uh, paramedic pool of applicants. And how many employees do you have, Chris? Currently 115. 150. And you have some turnover? No, no, sorry, 115. 115. One, one, yeah. Okay. Uh, but you, you do periodically have some turnover and attrition and yeah. things like that. 
And yeah, our, our current authorized staffing is 124. Um, and, and you know, here's, here's part of the root. It's not the problem. It's a problem all over the, the country, actually. And that is that uh, there's only one paramedic program in the state of Delaware located at the Delaware Technical and Community College. And it graduates, am I right, approximately 10 students a year? Yeah. And, and that's not a lot of students, man. I mean, when I was an EMS director, we graduated 20 to 21 in a class and we thought that that was low, but that's the most we could handle. So um, the, the three county ALS agencies constantly make significant efforts to recruit those graduating paramedics. I got them. I'm sure you send them sandwiches and cookies. Oh, yes. We're whining, dining, sending them trinkets, uh, providing ride alongs, anything we could do to get them. And it must be pretty competitive to get them in the program. So they probably have the right stuff before they even get in there. But it's just not enough, okay? Um, so it, it kind of fell well short of the needs of the paramedic system in, in Delaware and the recruitment efforts to recruit and hire certified paramedics or paramedic candidates from neighboring states also became a struggle to keep up with the demands of current service needs, let alone anticipated growth. Uh, it was at this point that the uh, Newcastle County paramedics thinking outside the box, made the decision to model an EMS uh, academy, as we'll call it, after the successful New County, uh, Newcastle County police program uh, to include a full paramedic certificate or EMT and paramedics and taking applications from zero education to hero education in a nationally accredited program. And the thing that I love is that from the moment that they're selected for the program, they're on the payroll, am I right? That's correct. So they are being paid with no education to get education. And I'm gonna tell you some of the benefits they get. Now, if you can't recruit people from a program like that, you got a problem. Yeah, uh, it's, it's, they have to have three years of experience operating a motor vehicle, that's not a big deal. A uh, high school diploma or GED, uh, pass a physical fitness, push-ups, sit-ups, and, and a run. How far do they have to run? One mile. One mile. Count me yeah. out. In 16 minutes. 16 minutes. <laughs> they have to pass a written exam, uh, Accuplacer college entrance exam, for those who want to look that up, uh, pass oral boards, and a comp complete a comprehensive uh, background investigation, which I admire that you do and pass a medical, uh, physical, and psychological exam, something extremely important today. Then they're required, this is the requirement, to sign a, a five-year service agreement with Newcastle County that begins from the date of hire, am I correct? That's correct. So all I want from you is a guarantee you're gonna serve Newcastle County when you graduate the program for five years. So you got a, you got a steady flow of uh, applicants. Uh, how many have you, hired and put through the program, let's say in the last year. I know the program could be offered every two years, but uh, roughly how many paramedics did you gain? So our, uh, we're in the process now for Academy 4. Academy 3, uh, we hired 22. That's amazing. That is amazing. Uh, I can tell you that I have departments all over the country that be, be happy to hire two, let alone 22. So Yeah, well, I, and I'm going to blow you away even more. Um, we had over 600 applicants for the program. Is that from all over the country? Uh, mostly regional, um, you know, because if you get hired, you're going to have to move uh, and relocate. Uh, we do recruit, obviously, heavily within Newcastle County, um, but we also recruit within Delaware and then our bordering counties as well. Do you do any kind of a uh, stipend for somebody that you hire from outside the state if they have to move? We do not currently. Okay, that's another program you gotta yeah. look at. Yeah, you know, know. If I'm a young paramedic who doesn't have a lot and doesn't need a lot of furniture moved, if you give me a thousand bucks, I can get airfare and I can come down and if you help me find an apartment, I'm in. Yeah, we, we, I met, uh, we have information sessions uh, pretty much weekly about the program where people can come and learn, um, learn how to be successful in the application process. Um, and the last one I was at, there was a gentleman from South Carolina. Um, so the word is getting out to, you know, other states up and down the East Coast. And, you know, right now, and I'll give you this little tidbit, a little announcement, uh, I'm working with the, uh, with Australia 
and uh, Australia has paramedics galore and not positions for them. And they are wonderfully trained paramedics. They go to school for three years or longer. Um, they are exceptionally well trained in research and in ethics and in all, in all, all those things. Um, and they have applicants, they're working on a process to get them into the United States. So if, uh, if you wanna reach out to somebody, I'm certainly gonna give you the, uh, the uh, person's name, but uh, they, they actually, and the paramedics wanna go all over. You know, they, they come, they send me 21 a year and we put them on ride alongs in San Diego, Los Angeles, Las Vegas. They get a feel for the different systems. And then um, some of them are like, hey, I want to go to this Acadian system. I want to go to this system, or professional ambulance service. Um, they hear about it. They study it. And they want to go where, you know, some want high call volume and some want uh, a place where they just are respected as a paramedic. So I, I think that would be good for your system as well. Absolutely. So see, you've got to give me a retention fee if I get you a couple applicants. Um, now, about the program, the, the academy lasts 12 months, right? Yes. And uh, that's pretty much full time, but they get weekends off, right? They get weekends and holidays off, yes. And uh, your county system has two paramedics assigned full time to the academy. Yes, that and is correct. One is a supervisor, um, so they serve at the rank of sergeant or higher, and the other is there to kind of supplement uh, whatever they need. Uh, we call them the class coordinator for the program. Now, here's the best part because I know good fellowship. Tell them where the program is offered. Westchester, Pennsylvania, right next door to Westchester University. And how far is that outside the Delaware border? Not far. Uh, no, about 20 minutes, um, depending upon traffic. Now, if you don't know anything about the Good Fellowship Program, they have a wonderful program. It's a wonderful service. They have very skilled paramedics. They decided a long time ago that they were going to run their own program. They have a separate education department. Um, it's very well run. Uh, and the unique part about their system, because I've been there, is uh, upstairs over their headquarters, they have, I think it's six bedrooms and a kitchen uh -huh. and bathrooms. And uh, if you're going to college at Westchester or somewhere else and you're certified paramedic or EMT and you join Good Fellowship, they let you live there. So you basically live there and then that's a guarantee for them of night crews. And, and I love that. Boy, you talk about night watch, that's the original night watch. Um, it's, it's a great opportunity. Now it's a diverse and they, program. And then, they, and then they get to hear our recruits working out at eight o'clock in the morning upstairs right above them. Oh, good, I like that. Something on the ceiling, right? Yep. Um, it recruits uh, range from no experience to EMT certified, right? So you could have yep. somebody who just wants to be an EMT. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, um, you know, we are a government agency, right? We work for the government. We're all got Newcastle County employees. And one of the things we're always trying to do is we're trying to look at citizens in our community um, that maybe, you know, just need that little extra something to get into the field. Um, maybe never even thought about being a paramedic. Um, I mean, we put, when we recruit, we put paramedics in the middle of the city of Wilmington. Uh, we go in corner stores, we're walking down the street. Um, you know, we're sitting in, in public squares and just talking to people. Um, have you ever thought about this? And uh, what's really nice about that is even if they're not interested in the paramedic academy, they then become knowledgeable about what EMS is and what a paramedic is. Um, and some of them, you know, just by talking to them, didn't know that this was a possibility for them. And then you throw out it's full time, it's Monday through Friday, you get benefits, a full time salary. Um, and then it becomes a reality. And we've had people like that, that um, couldn't, didn't even know what EMS was. And, you know, we recruit them into the program. Um, and now they have a full time job, they're serving their, you know, fellow community members. Um, and supporting their families in the process. And that's and what makes what about, it really What about the schools, the high schools? Do you go to high schools and hit that? Ab yeah, absolutely. We have a partnership with um, the technical high schools in Newcastle County. One of their uh, shops is actually EMS. Um, and when they're seniors, they spend one day a week um, from six o'clock to, to 10, six to 10 um, on our shops. Um, so we have actually, we actually looked at this the other day. We have six. Um, that have been through that program that currently work for us. Well, let me tell you about that ride along type of program. And uh, most people probably don't know this, but when, when Jim Page was a battalion chief, 
uh, they came to him and said, Paige, uh, Jack Webb wants to do a dragnet type story or Adam 12 type story on rescues. So you're assigned to give him rescues. And Jack's, and Jim said, we don't get that many rescues. And they said, you know, keep your mouth shut, do what you're told, come up with some rescues. So Bob Senator, who was the uh, uh, director, he went to Jim and Jim said, you know, we don't get many rescues, but we have this new pilot program. We have six paramedics running around in station wagons and vehicles, and, and they're delivering this thing called paramedicine. We're calling them paramedics. And he said, uh, and Senator said, wow, that sounds intriguing. He said, would you like to do a ride along? And he put them with two of the best paramedics. It was very shrewd on his part. And they ran his ass off all day and saw some trauma. They saw a little bit of everything. He got to see how respected they were. It was a wonder in the ER that these new people, they were all male at the time, that these two guys came in with lines started, established. And he went back to, to Jack Webb and said, this is what we got to do. And that's how emergency was twisted from being a rescue type thing, which would have been boring, you know? And I mean, you, you can't show a true rescue in an hour. A true rescue takes about an hour. But, um, you know, emergency became a hit. And so he always talked about the ride along as being really important. And then another guy came to town, uh, a young doctor, and uh, he went to see Jim Page. And Jim said, hey, we have this new program about paramedics. And he said, what's a paramedic? And so he put him out on a ride along and that was Dr. Ron Stewart, who became one of the most preeminent physicians in, in the world. Uh, he lives in Nova Scotia right now. He became involved with the uh, LA County system and he became involved as the medical director. So there's two ride along stories for you. And I, when, I when, when we had an office in San Diego, if I got a new editor, I had special people in San Diego Fire Rescue that would take them and give them the best ride along of the time. Now, and I'm not talking about a minimal ride along. I'm talking about doing the vehicle check and looking at the drug box and operating all of the mechanical equipment. And uh, my, my editors then became really, really smart. And uh, you know, I'm proud to say that was one real distinction that I felt from GEMS. Now let me go back to the program. The first three weeks are an intro and they're held at NCC Police Academy. Yep. And why are they held at the Police Academy the first three weeks? So some of the things that we instill in them, um, commitment, integrity, uh, loyalty, discipline, um, the things you really want your paramedics to have, because, you know, if you think about what we do, um, practicing medicine, being in someone's private residence without most of the time any supervision, um, our, our goal, in, one of our goals in the academy is to instill those uh, qualities and instill those core values in them from the very beginning. Um, so those first three weeks are, are focused in on making them um, cohesive as a team. Um, if we do get 25, which we really want 25 this time, um, all 25 of them are going to need each other to get through a paramedic program. We've all been there. We've all been through a paramedic program. It's difficult. Um, you know, I, I graduated from a four-year uh, program, got a bachelor's degree. It's like, oh, I'll go to community college, get my paramedic associate's degree. It won't be a big deal. It was one of the hardest things I ever did. Um, and by having these 25 individuals work together these first three weeks and come together as a team and help each other, um, informal leaderships will form. Um, they're going to need that going forward in the program. And we instill all that in them in the first three weeks. Plus, it enables us to get things out of the way, um, ethics training. Um, you know, we'll throw in some of the human resource stuff um, that we have to um, this way, when week three or week three or four comes and they start the paramedic program, they can focus on school and they can focus on being successful. And uh, I think it's great because you mingle them with police and then they're going to have to mingle with police on every single call. Yep. There's so many systems in this country, particularly after the, 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 the horrible incident in Minneapolis where uh, the police don't really mingle with the EMS providers. And in that particular case, we had a great um, podcast like this with uh, Steve Worth and company and, and uh, Walt Stoy. And we, we said that in the Floyd case, all you had to do was walk over and say, Newcastle County paramedic, my patient now. And, and everything should have stopped and they should have started their CPR. But 
there was an intimidation level. It's a great EMS system in Minneapolis, but um, you know that you know the, the, the saber rattling of uh, you know this is my patient. Forget it. No. So we take we take every opportunity. We um we'll PT. Um, we'll do physical training with the Wilmington Fire Academy of Thurin, with the Police Academy of Thurin, because you know six months from now. Um, or six months from when they see each other, it could be, you know, at, at a scene or at an incident where I don't have time to introduce myself. And if that relationship is built during their training process, it's going to make their ability to work together out in the street so much better. Another great aspect of the program is a typical day involves uh, starting of uh, 30 minutes of PT. Yeah. Right. And uh, yeah. that occurs right on the, in the classroom up above where the students should be awake anyway, down below. Yeah. And so I'm sure they hear jumping jacks and other things going on. And then they go to the classroom. Yes. Uh, they get an hour for lunch, more classroom, yeah. mm -hmm. and then another hour of PT at the end of the day. Good yeah. way. Now, to yeah. And I say PT, I mean, it could simply be, you know, we're going to take a run around Westchester and just go for a run to kind of, it's the end of the day. I've been in class all day to kind of, you know, uh, clear my head. Um, but also, I mean, we all know how strenuous the job and how stressful the job is um, as a paramedic. Um, it's hard for us to recreate that mental stress. So we try to give them ways to, um, to, to kind of relieve that stress, you know? Um, and by putting those things into the program and by building them up front, um, hopefully they can take those away from them when they're done. Now, the first five weeks are dedicated to the EMT certification. If I'm already an EMT, do I have to go to those first five weeks? Absolutely. Oh, boy. Yeah. It's, it's, all, it's all about being cohesive, AJ. Um, it, it, no one is different than anyone else when they start day one. Um, what's really good about that is if I'm an EMT and I'm coming into the program, um, it, there should be some leadership there, right? Like I, I, I've done this, I know this, let me help you. Um, and uh, we like to see those individuals reach out to uh, maybe students or recruits that are struggling a little bit. Um, and kind of help each other, lead study groups, those types of things. But everybody has to go through the same thing. Now, you know, I, those who know me know that I believe that um, what we do in EMS is 95% basic life support. And Absolutely. we get about 5% of our calls that are like a, a third alarm fire where we have to do everything, everybody in. Um, but most of it is the basics. And I really think that people have forgotten to do the basics. You and I were talking offline about a very close, uh, somebody very close to me that was involved in a uh, motorcycle accident for a police agency and had 27 fractures, including the pelvis, the back, um, tib fib, shattered ankle, uh, just horribly injured. And the key to me there is, uh, you know, and, I'm, and we're doing an article about it is uh, a lot of systems don't realize that they have to immobilize the pelvis. I don't care what you do for it. Uh, this particular individual had 22 units of blood, six fractures of the pelvic area. And, and uh, at a recent paramedic graduation that I spoke at, I, I pointed out that uh, our, our, our training in trauma life support, whatever program you take shows you that you could lose four units of blood alone in the pelvic area. So without basic life support, it wasn't about ALS. It was about quickly packaging this patient and getting them off to a trauma center and you know, they did all of the real fluid management stuff there. So good basic life really can save the day. Um, and then they graduate the program with National Registry, EMT and paramedic certification. They get all of the proper credentials. In addition, they get college credits in conjunction with Westchester University. That's correct. That's a big bonus. Yeah, they have to go back and take three more courses and they'll have their associate's degree. Three more courses, God mm -hmm. almighty. And you know what, Westchester is a beautiful place. And yeah. then you don't know about it, folks. You're probably going to have 40,000 applicants the next time around. <laughs> uh, benefits for recruits? Wait till you hear this. Now, I call you a benefit for recruit, but you're, you're on the payroll. You get all of this. Mm -hmm. Your work schedule, as we said, is 8 to 4, Monday through Friday. If there's any extra time involved, you get paid overtime for it. Isn't that nice? Uh, they have holidays and weekends off. Their paramedic tuition is paid for by NCC. All books and class materials are paid for by NCC. Better than when I went to Lehigh University. Holy cow. Uh, and here's another one. They wear uniforms, which I love for, for academy people. And uh, the uniforms are paid for by NCC. And NC, NCC also has them dry clean for the students. Am I right? That's correct. That's sharp. 
Med Shark. That's something that we did at Citronia when I was there. And, you know, there's nothing like a freshly, you know, laundered shirt that people come in and put on and you don't have to worry about somebody who, who you know, just forgot to be able to do it. Plus, it, it, it doesn't take away time for the students to have to pretty up their, their uniforms. That's all being done for them. All they, you still, want they, they, still, they still have to shine their boots. They still, you know, and it's like the military. They get all the essential equipment issued to them. Their bunker gear, soft body armor, safety glasses, traffic safety vests, boots, rain gear, stethoscope. And one of my favorite giveaways is they get a portable radio. Oh, my God. Everybody knows communications is one of the most important things in EMS. So when you give somebody a radio, for me, that's like giving a child a pacifier. I used to be able to know every button on my radio, and that's so important when, you, when you're in, in uh, EMS and out in the field. They have free access to any NCC gem 24 hours a day. They receive full county benefits. Vision, dental, and additional flex spending programs are available to them. They become enrolled in a 30-year pension program, uh, plus receive NCC matching deferred compensation in a five or 457B deferred compensation program. So they're learning to save money and they're getting their money matched, which is, I mean, you, you can't get like a 10% on your, on your investment today, but you put some money into a deferred program and the county matches it, um, you'll end up in a tremendous uh, situation 20 years from now, which is a problem for paramedicine. Um, they don't get paid very well. Are, are you free to talk about what, uh, what their starting wage is? So um, it's about $42,000 a year. Um, and I say about because that doesn't include, uh, obviously, the overtime that they're going to get. Um, and remember, on top of that, um, there's, a, you know, the tuition for the paramedic program and all the books and stuff that they would be, you know, paying for out of their pocket. Um, Newcastle County, and I say that as the starting salary, just to kind of throw it out there. Um, Newcastle County also, by our merit system, employees, as long as they get a satisfactory performance evaluation, get a 5% raise every year, up, up to 10 years. Um, that doesn't include our, um, our uh, union raises, uh, which are frequent, and that also doesn't include your promotional raises, which are another 5%. Um, so if, you're, if your union negotiates a 3% pay increase, and it's the same year as your promotion to paramedic first class, you're going to get a 13% raise in one year. So that number that I gave you to start out goes up tremendously after the first year. So that's over $3,000 a month, and that's very respectable um, for a starting wage. Plus, when you figure in, the benefits are probably 30% on yeah. top of that, uh, well over 30%. That's a pretty good compensation program. I, I, I just point that out because there's so many systems that are paying a uh, limited minimum wage. I can tell you here in California, some of the paramedics that don't work for fire departments are not paid nearly that much. And, and they work just as hard and they train just as hard. And it's just a sin that they're in a program. That, and, and they leave, they leave. They're all, they're applicants for fire service uh, programs because they get the county benefits and they get the better wage. So uh, people have to begin to worry about it. And, and as I always point out, if you have a paramedic who's really inexperienced and makes one mistake, the money that you lose in that settlement is, uh, is well worth you, that you should be paying them a little bit more uh, an hour. Again, I want I want a bonus on that. Um, where am I at here? Um, they, uh, they also receive credit union membership, blood bank membership, life insurance, annual physicals paid for and performed while working uh, in a nationally accredited EMS service. Uh, some miscellaneous information. There's an intense effort over three months targeting a diverse population of uh, Newcastle County residents. Uh, as we said before, five to 600 applicants uh, per, per year looking at the academy and you're looking to take in 20 to 25 recruits. So let's talk about the benefits of this program. First of all, I called you uh, as soon as I heard about the program, and you know, that's that's generally I hear about a tip, and you know, Jim Page already said, always said, make that phone call. Don't wait yeah. a minute, and I didn't wait a minute because, a, I always envision your beautiful trucks. <laughs> I always remember coming to Delaware and lecturing and finding that when you started a class, everybody was in class, ready for you to start um, when you when you got there. So I, I always had a good feel about Newcastle. 
I knew Larry Tan, who ran the system for many years, very respected, and uh, recently retired. And uh, I just thought, wow, I got to find out more about it. And the more I found out about it, the more I thought, oh, my God, I got to share this because it's, it's not that hard. I don't think it's that hard to, to duplicate. Uh, you can, number one, you can diversify your organization. Am I right? Absolutely. And that's that's one of the driving forces behind us starting the academy was um, because being a government service, we want to be a representation of the people we serve. Um, and, and we weren't. Uh, and it was very hard, very hard to recruit diverse paramedics. Um, so by going out in the community and um, actually recruiting individuals um, that and giving them opportunities to be part of our organization, um, it's paid off dividends. And, and have you seen a change in the diversity? Absolutely. I, mean, I know you have a lot of really skilled female paramedics, but I mean, among all of the other ethnics. Yeah. Um, so from those 600 applications, um, we had a, a greater than 50%, and this will probably surprise you, a greater than 50% diverse applicant pool. Um, Amazing. It, it, yeah, and it actually surprised us. Um, but the, the, the problem that we did encounter, if anybody um, you know, does decide to, to take this route, uh, we lost a lot of those individuals along the way in the process, whether it was fitness testing or written testing, um, but we learned from that. Um, so now um, for fitness testing, we have practice tests. We put videos out on how to be successful. For the written testing, we have information sessions. Come learn what, what the, these tests are about. We'll give you um, practice tests. We'll give you websites that'll help you be successful in the process. Um, and then as far as the, the background goes, um, you know, we, we tell them, here's the stuff to get, to get together. Um, here's what we're gonna be looking for. Um, and as this program has gone on and we're approaching the fourth academy, um, I'll tell you, um, we normally lose about 50% of our applicant pool um, in each step of the process. So we lose 50% in fitness, 50% in written testing and so forth. Um, we fit, we've had our first fitness test and our first written test. Um, and we lost three people. Um, and we are very proud of that. Um, the problem is now we have to background all those individuals um, and oral board them, but that's a good problem to have. Um, so we feel that not only are we going to be able to diversify our organization much more, um, but we're going to get some really good people, um, some really good people in here. And, and as I think, for, you know, I found with other programs, you tell them up front, uh, listen, we know some of you have problems with your math skills. Some of you can't read real well. Uh, don't apply unless you can begin to do that and give them some way to, to do that because some people are not prepared for calculation of medications and you know in fact Jim Page lost his uh he, he left uh, after emergency was on the air he went down to North Carolina as their first EMS chief director and uh he was at a bar one night and the guy said to him hey Jim you've just been fired and he was fired because he took a stand that uh any illiterates in North Carolina could not have the test read to them uh, which is what they wanted they lobbied that they wanted the test read to them and he said you can't you have to be able to read suicide notes, you have to be able to read drugs, medications, et cetera, and you have to be able to read your textbook. And uh, because of that, they fired him. And he went off and started the ACT Foundation and the rest is history. He bought a magazine for a dollar called Paramedics International, and that became GEMS, what we are today. But he always said to me, everybody should get fired at least once. That put the fire in him to be able to get the message out. And that's what GEMS was all about. So that's a, that's a, it's a great opportunity. And, uh, you know, for those people that think uh, they can't become, I've had people say they couldn't become a paramedic. I just mentored a young lady who um, her parents came to me at EMS today or before EMS today and said, my daughter is all in about EMS. Can you help her? I said, I'd love to help her. Could I have the parents reach out? Oh my God. So they brought her to EMS today. It was the only time I really met her personally. And uh, I mentored her along the way, and she went to a paramedic program in California that, um, quite frankly, was a little discriminatory against female uh, applicants and gave her a hard time on the ride along and evaluations and did not want to pass her. And I said to her, you need to go to a better program. You need to go to one that will respect you. And she applied to UCLA. Uh, Baxter Larman and company took her under their wing. Uh, I, along with about eight other people that I put together as a team of, of experts, 
uh, were available to her, whatever her questions were, wilderness, medicine, you name it. We had somebody on tap and uh, she finished number one in her class at UCLA. And I was, I was very happy to see that. I went to dinner with her and her parents uh, down here in San Diego because she announced that she was gonna go and, and uh, uh, leave the state of California for another you know, very good EMS system. And uh, I, I think that's what it takes. Everybody should mentor somebody. And I know you guys have mentoring and field training officers and anybody who doesn't know about that FTO program, it was really started in Delaware and uh, everybody else thought that they were doing it, but uh, Delaware really, really perfected it. Um, so it's a job opportunity for people who really don't have time or money to, to pay for paramedic school, which I love. And ability to hire for character and qualities you want in a dedicated and driven employee. And uh, you get a large number of paramedics into a system all at one time. Boy, the esprit de corps must be great when they finish as students and then they, how, how long is their internship? They, I'm sure they can't ride alone for a while. They're gonna, they're gonna ride always. You, you run a two paramedic response system, right? Yes, uh, that is correct. So after they finish the paramedic academy, AJ, they still come out and they go through our FTO process. Um, because even though they're a nationally registered paramedic and they've met the minimum requirements, we still require them to go out and do field training with our, our FTOs. Um, and I'll also tell you that not everyone is successful. Um, you know, we do have um, individuals that really try the best that they can. We, we throw everything at them, give every opportunity to be successful, um, you know, put them with mentors, um, you know, give them things to kind of help them along the way. And, and we do have a couple that um, unfortunately just, just don't make it. Um, but they're typically in, in FTO after the program anywhere from, you know, three, four or five months. Um, not many go beyond that because um, they do do their field time as part of their paramedic program in Delaware, even though the program is in Pennsylvania. Um, the Delaware's Office of, of EMS has worked really well with us at allowing Pennsylvania paramedic students to do their field time in Delaware. Um, that took a lot of coordination between the PA office and the Delaware office. Um, but that's it's a good it's state office and, and that's really what you need, the coordination between Pennsylvania and I know Pennsylvania does a good job coordinating as well. So when they, when they graduate that field time is that in a separate vehicle with an FTO or will it be an FTO on the truck that they're with? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's uh, so they just, they're, they're a third paramedic on that truck. Um, so you still have the two paramedics and then there's the, um, we call them, once you're certified, we call you a paramedic candidate. You're not a recruit anymore. Um, and then they go through the same FTO process that any pre-certified paramedic does. And during that time, you know, usually on a truck like you have, you rotate who the you know, quick running senior person's going to be at the call or the crew chief, if you call it that. Um, do they, they are, they're expected to run every call? Yes. And absolutely. document, 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 right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You know, my experience has been, because I, I, I've been doing the FTO thing like most of my career and, and you get some people that are very smart in the classroom, but, you know, you go to a call and, and they just fall apart and it's really sad. I was yeah. going to a bad wreck one time and the police were telling us to expedite. The car was on fire. The person had burns. And uh, the young recruit that we had just turned to me and said, I can't do this. I can't do this. I said, you have to do this. And, and that person said, I can't, I, I can't do it. I said, that, well, okay, that, step back. I'll run the call. You assist me because I'm not going to risk the patient. And then we tried that same person with several other people and Finally, that person just had to say, I I'm a good EMT. Uh, I wasn't cut out to be a paramedic. Yeah, and that does happen. And, you know, fortunately, we have relationships with uh, some of our hospital agencies or our hosp local hospitals, Christiana and St. Francis, um, that do hire paramedics as part of their transport teams. Um, and we try everything that we can do um, if, if someone is not successful in our field training process. We'll look for other opportunities for employment with them within the county. Um, we'll, you know, offer other agencies out to them, maybe that aren't as busy as us, um, and that things aren't intense. Um, well, and career development for your field providers. Does yeah. Does it get assigned anywhere? Uh, yes. So, uh, we have a lot of career development, actually. Um, you know, as the, our field providers, there's, there's four to three different steps. Sorry, paramedic first class, corporal, and senior corporal. Um, and you do not get that from just time and grade. 
Um, we have other things added in there. You have to give back to the agency. You have to participate in things. So, um, you know, we, we have committees, we have um, specialized groups, we have special operations teams. In order to get promoted and be a corporal or senior corporal, you have to participate in those. Um, and then we have competitive promotions, such as uh, sergeants, our field sergeants, our field supervisors. Um, they're by themselves. Um, we have two um, in service all the time. Um, we basically divide the county in half and you have a field supervisor, one for the north part of the county, one for the south. Um, and then we have lieutenants, uh, four of which run, sorry, yeah, four of which run shifts. The other four do um, administrative duties um, and then captain, assistant chief and, and chief. So um, once, you, um, once you reach the level of uh, corporal or senior corporal, uh, you can put in for reassignments if you want. One, like I said, one of the, the corporal's reassignment is to the academy. So we pull you off the street for a year. Um, sometimes it's a little more than that. Um, and that's your assignment. Um, you know, we have sergeants. Uh, you know, the um, uh, one of our lieutenants actually uh, just got reassigned for the last year doing all of the COVID testing uh, that was sponsored by Newcastle County. Um, we don't have a, a health agency in Newcastle County. It's, uh, you know, we rely on the state for that. So when it came time to look for, you know, expert advice on how do we, how do we test? How do we do this? Um, and then how do we vaccinate? Uh, we had a paramedic there that was leading that charge. Um, and those are all the other things that you can get involved with here. It's not just field paramedics. Hey, in past years, we had a team compete in the gym game. So you're going to have a yes. team yeah. this year? So, yes, um, we, we, we like being competitive for our, with our fellow uh, ALS agencies in Delaware and, and our friends in Sussex County do very well. Uh, but I think they need some in-state competition as well. I love it. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to tell you, folks, you come to EMS today and you watch the GEMS games, you'll probably see a Delaware team in the finals. Yeah. I mean, that's how yeah. good the EMS is. And, and the key thing is, and, I, and I, it's, like, it's like the Australian system. You could drop an Australian paramedic with a parachute and that single paramedic can coordinate a whole scene. And what I find from the competitive teams from Newcastle as well as Sussex is that one person may be the team leader, but if they're split off to go take care of a patient, they can work in the Wonderlands all by themselves. They don't need a helper with them. They'll, they'll involve the fire service, EMS, et cetera. And boy, we got a great final prepared for this year. So I hope you do compete. Um, I'll be right there in the front row to cheer you on. Uh, Chris, I really want to thank you for spending the time with us here. I hope that our audience uh, appreciates uh, the, the, the value of that program, a good salary, respect it for any person in the community, encouragement, mentoring, uh, rudimentary help if they're having problems, uh, all the way through the program, tying them up with good fellowship, which is a great program and uh, great education, ride-alongs, respected by their peers, FTO type of program. Um, you know, the program sells itself. And, and, and why I say that is because others out there can go in with five or six other services yeah. and develop a similar program. There's many programs that will offer pay, but there's very few that are offering pay while you're in school. And there's very few that are offering pay for people from the community who want to be an EMT. And then, oh my God, you know, to, to, to be a young person and I call them kids now, to be a young kid in EMS and to, to be able to say, I've already got a retirement plan. I've already got benefits. If I get sick, my family's covered, et cetera, what an amazing opportunity. So um, for that, you're, you guys are nominated for an EMS 10 award. Uh, I, I wish you the best of luck with that. Uh, to me, it's a no brainer because uh, it's such an innovative program. And I wanna thank you again. And, uh, We'll, we'll see who the Delaware team is at uh, EMS today. We'll see who the, who the winning ones are because the winning team always has to buy me a rum and Coke. And that's, uh, that's the only requirement that I have. So Chris, but, have a great day. But, Any but, last words? Yeah, but before we head out, um, just if anybody's interested, uh, follow us on Facebook, Instagram. Uh, we're constantly putting stuff out on Facebook with changes um, uh, in the, for the Academy videos, just um, information about it. Um, and then you can also visit us at our website, nccde.org backslash EMS.
Go slower on that. Where is it again? NCC. Sorry, nccde.org backslash EMS. Backslash EMS. And, and uh, on Facebook, you're Newcastle County Paramedics? E yes, yeah. I apologize. Um, we I are. We'll find it. They can find it. You yeah. Know? It's uh, what I like is you're on Instagram, you're on Facebook, and I'm sure they can call uh, if they have to and, and talk to somebody. It's ncc.paramedics. ncc.paramedics. And, and if they wanted to call somebody to just talk about the program, mm -hmm. who would that be? Th area code 302-395-8188. And that's our recruitment line. We have a line dedicated to specific uh, to recruitment. I may um, repeat that one more time. Area code 302-395-8188. 8188. Hey, a great program, a, a great uh, guest. Thank you for being with me. And I uh, hope to see you at EMS today. Thanks, AJ. Okay, take care.